Welcome to the second example for chapter four. This is going to be one of a long string of example videos that are each highlighting different sticking points and making sure we recognize how to handle each of these possible complications that show up in force problems. What I want you to always be trying to focus on is what each of these commons has, each of these examples has in common and um, make sure that you're applying that common process to the problems that we have you try for problem sets. All right, so the first thing that we do, no matter what chapter that we're in, is we draw a picture of the problem as we read the setup. So we pull a five kilogram cart. So it's gonna be five kilograms. And we pull it along a frictionless table, so no friction to worry about here. We'll see it soon, but not in this problem. Using a 30 Newton force upwards at a 35 degree angle. Now, we had a picture of this in the slides, but that's what this would look like. 35 degrees up above the table, and the pull force, F pull, is 30 Newtons. Now, the thing that we do with every single example problem that we come across in chapter four and five is we draw a free body diagram also, even if we're not being asked to do it. So the free body diagram is gonna help us keep track of all of the different vector arrows, and it's gonna be the place where we make sure that we have all the forces involved. So let's start with the pull force. This pull force is 30 newtons. And as soon as we see a vector at an angle, we want to break it up into components. So we have a component of that pull force that is in the x direction. And that's going to be 30 cosine 35 degrees. Let's write that angle in. I forgot to do that. Here's the 35 degree angle. And so we're adjacent. We use cosine. And then we also have a component that is vertical. It is the Y component, and it's 30 sine 35 degrees. So also in this problem, because we're on the surface of Earth, we're going to have the force of gravity pointing straight down. And the key thing about gravity is we can always define it as mass times the acceleration of gravity, the same 9.8 g number that we learned back in chapter two. And because we are interacting with a surface, the table is a surface, and because it's a flat surface, perpendicular to that surface would be straight upwards. And so that straight upwards perpendicular force that's coming from a surface is called the normal force. So by definition, the word normal means perpendicular and we only have a normal force when we have a surface perpendicular to the surface. Okay. So part A here is asking us to find the forward acceleration, AX. In that case, we're thinking about the X direction. So near the free body diagram, we can remind ourselves that the direction of acceleration is going to be our positive direction. So we're going to use Newton's second law, but we're going to use it specifically for the x direction, which I've already color coded red, so I'll stick with that. And in that case, we look at our free body diagram and we're looking for all of the arrows that point directly in the x direction, either directly left or directly right. In this example, there is only one of those forces. So the net force gets replaced with all of the forces that pointed in that direction. There's only one. The mass is five and the acceleration is what we're solving for. So we have 30 cosine 35 degrees. If I divide both sides by five to get A all by itself, then I get 30 cosine 35 degrees divided by five and I can plug all of that into my calculator. I get 4.91 meters per second squared. We've already drawn it pointing to the right, so we don't really need to indicate that further, but we can make a note to ourselves that acceleration is always a 
uh, vector, and so it does have direction information. It's just that we've already drawn it here. All right, the other thing we're being asked to find is the normal force. If we look, the normal force is an up and down force. So in order to solve for it, we are going to have to use the vertical equation for Newton's second law. And the key part is, is we ask ourselves, is the cart moving in the up and down direction? Is there any acceleration in that direction? And in that case, the answer is no. There is no motion above the table or into the table. The acceleration is only sideways, and so this becomes zero on the right side. So the right side is going to equal zero because we don't have an acceleration in the up and down direction. Now we look and we see how many arrows point in the up and down direction. We have the normal force, we have the force of gravity, and we have the y component of our pull. We need to include all of those when we write out the net force in the y direction. The key thing here is that forces with the same sign or same direction as each other will get the same sign. And forces that point in the opposite direction will get the opposite sign. We could have written that the force of gravity was positive and the other two arrows were negative. It would be equivalent because this is equal to zero. And now we can plug in the numbers that we have. So the normal force, which is what we're solving for, plus 30 sine 35 degrees minus, so mg is 5 times 9.8, all of that equals zero. Okay, so we have the normal force plus 17.2 minus 49 equals zero. And so the normal force, when we solve for it, is going to equal 49 minus 17.2 which equals 31.8 newtons. Now notice in the very first full example from chapter four, the normal force is not equal to gravity. It is really important that we recognize that the normal force is not equivalent to gravity pointing in the opposite direction, even though a lot of students tend to get that into their head at some point in the semester, uh, in the chapter, and I'm not quite sure why that happens, but we need to recognize that misconception immediately. It is already a different number in this very first example where we see it happen. So keep that in mind that we're always solving for the normal force and not assuming anything specific about it. To check that our number makes sense, the normal force here is less than the force of gravity because we're helping lift the cart a little bit off the table with our upwards pull force. In a couple of examples, we will see a downwards push force where we're actually pushing the cart further into the table and the normal force becomes a larger number than gravity normally is. So we never want to assume anything specific about it. We just want to take the situation that we're given and figure out what's going on. So we will see plenty more examples in chapter four. So I will see you in those next videos.